Thank you. It's great to be here in Rezekne. So um, thank you very much for coming this morning. And I hope that I can give you some ideas to take your business to new places this morning. I'd like to welcome you to the world of pilot fish. A world where the deep oceans, the opportunities for growth for your business to spread across the world are infinite. Where the world is covered by 80% of sea. And therefore the opportunity for you in Latvia or for any business across the world to come to Latvia is infinite in terms of the ways in which you can do that. I'd like to tell you about a strategy which I call a pilot fish strategy, which is faster, cheaper, and lower risk than perhaps you've ever achieved before. So let's start by thinking about what creates a pilot fish strategy. As we look across our incredible world, which is volatile, but it's vibrant at the same time, full of opportunity. It's uncertain in terms of how it changes, but it's unreal the way in which you can combine physical and digital together. It's complex, but it's crazy at the speed at which you can make new ideas happen. Who's got WhatsApp on their mobile phone? Put your hand up. It took WhatsApp three years to create $19 billion of value. Three years. Incredible. Not by just working hard and making things and working hard and making things and working hard, but by having a better idea. Thinking differently. How can you engage networks of people in new ways? How can you use technology to be emotional with people. And it's not just kind of ambiguous, this world we live in, but it's astounding the impact and the speed of the impact which you can have. So most companies try to grow. I'm sure everybody here is here because you want to grow your business. Am I right? In some way, you want to grow your business grow in Latvia, or grow beyond Latvia to the rest of the world. 
But most companies reach a point where growth is difficult. Where all the good things which worked beforehand stop working. Where the products, where the messages, where the channels, where the customer experience which made you successful in your small region, maybe in Riga, in Latvia, suddenly doesn't work when you go to Poland, doesn't work when you go to Germany. And you have to start investing in new ways. You have to start spending money building a brand which you never had to spend before. You have to explain things in different ways to new audiences. And it becomes more risky. It becomes more expensive. And this is where growth gets difficult. When you go beyond your natural market, it becomes harder. So entering new markets, entering new geographies, entering new categories, maybe moving out from being a drinks business to being a food business too. Maybe moving out from being a, an oil business to being a gas or a biorenewables business as well. So being able to do new types of things for your customers, it becomes harder. And what made you successful in the past suddenly can make you unsuccessful. That extra expense suddenly becomes a debt which destroys your existing business. So this strategy I want to talk about is about how you can do things faster, cheaper and at less risk without destroying your business and by reaching out to new markets and new categories faster and better. If we look across the world today, you know, it amazes me where the people are. Of our 7 billion, soon to be 9 billion people in the world, only 1 billion people here in North and South America, 1 billion people in Europe, 1 billion people in Middle East and Africa, but 4 billion people in Asia. There's actually a small, incredibly fast-growing city, it's a bit like Rizekna, in China. It's called Gaiyang. And if you draw a circle 4,000 kilometers around Gaiyang, you will find more than half of the world's population. So in many ways, Gaiyang is the center of the world today, but equally, Rizekna could be because we live in a connected world today. So let's look where growth is in terms of the customers for our businesses. So where you base your business from a production point of view or, or an ideas generation come to you, you can then reach out across the world. And whilst we see the Eurozone, based on this month's forecasts for next year, still struggling to grow, we see other parts of the world growing much faster than before. China still strong, Indian being the best performer in the world today, Brazil struggling. So the question for you, if you want to grow your business, wherever you locate your business, is how are you gonna grow your business? Where's the best growth opportunity geographically and categories for you to grow? So thinking about this then leads you to your audience. So in consumer markets, thinking about how can you reach out to the millennial customer, now driving the majority of decisions, certainly the biggest influences within markets. $1.6 trillion worth of revenue to be got. But equally, you look for older consumers who live longer, healthier, and with bigger aspirations than ever before. The second biggest growth in the digital market the biggest growth in the world travel market, being the over 60s. And then the female consumer being actually bigger than China and India combined in terms of their growth. So whatever your business, think about, well, how can you reach out to new groups of customers? How can you engage people in different ways? But as you reach out to those new places, it's a deep, dark ocean, which is scary. And in the deep oceans, there are sharks waiting to get you. So how do you avoid the danger of reaching out to new places, be it to a new country, or be it to a new category, or even to a new type of customer? Well, 
In global markets, everybody is hungry. So don't do the same things as everybody else. Don't just copy what you've done before. Think about how can you do things in different ways. And the two biggest assets any business has today, one is the ideas which it has, and the second is the networks which it belongs to. The business networks, the ecosystem of partners, be it for, 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 for sourcing or producing, particularly the customer networks in terms of distributors and consumers to consumers who can then spread your business to, uh, between themselves. So think about how do you use ideas and networks. Because making things themselves is something which anybody could do. And if you look at the automotive industry, if you look at the technology industry, if you look at the pharmaceutical industry, most industries have recognized that actually making the stuff is not what's the most special thing about them. Designing it is more special, and then somebody having the skill to make it, maybe a partner. Equally, when they reach out there, it's not necessarily about themselves selling it, but it's about word of mouth between customers recommending that this is a great product to buy, this is a great company to do business with. So CEO to CEO, decision maker to decision maker, consumer to consumer, customer advocacy being much more powerful. So as companies try to grow, most companies turn to partnerships. And I guess that's the big theme of any form of growth today. How can you find the right partners for growth? And who are your partners for growth? So thinking about whether it's in the local area, if you're looking to invest or locate your business in Rizekne, or think about if you're a Latvian business and reaching out to the world, who are your partners to help you to achieve that? And that will probably make it much more successful, faster and cheaper and less risk than if you try to do it by yourself. Look at Cisco, for example. Cisco being a global virtual network of many, many, many small businesses connected together by a virtual brand which says, this is somebody you trust. And then certifying all those local businesses to be good quality and experts at what they do. So bringing together specialist capabilities and thinking what is your specialist capability which you can add to a network. Equally thinking about how can you be partner like Star Alliance or like Interflora in terms of reaching out to audiences so that they can, they can get to know you in lots of different places. So in a business to business sense, or in a consumer sense, how can you reach out to more people? And so partnerships take lots of different forms. So thinking about the risk involved and thinking about the impact you have, well, the traditional form of exporting, taking the product you have and then shipping it to another market and promoting it yourself and distributing it yourself is expensive and slow and risky. But if we look at some of the other ways through joint ventures or alliances, things can be faster, things can be cheaper, things can be less risk. But then it's actually the opportunity is up here. In licensing and franchising, so look at Stender's Soap Factory, for example. Great Latvian business. Being able to use the franchising model to reach out to new markets, to work with people who understand the local markets be it in Spain or America or Germany or wherever it might be, and to be able to control your brand at the same time, but with a local flavor and with local experts and with local sharing of cost and risk. So how can you reach out to new places? Maybe with co-branding. So using your brand and using another partner brand. Or how can you reach out further as an ingredient brand to new places. And the variety of different ways in which organizations win today is absolutely amazing. So one of the things I did last year was I want to understand the world and how it's changing. And I'd written seven books previously over the last 10 years 
since I first started coming to Latvia. But everything keeps changing in the world, and the models of success keep changing. And today we live in a world where issues such as social media, such as sustainability, such as speed of change, are driving a different approach to business strategy and to the formula for success. So what I wanted to do was to find out the companies who are winning today. I asked 1,000 CEOs, who, who are winning in your sector? Who's shaking it up? Who's doing things differently in banking, in healthcare, in manufacturing, in energy? Who's shaking things up? And what, is, what are they doing? What's the new models of success? And from a thousand CEOs, we looked at 10 sectors and 10 companies in each different sector. And this is the new book, which came out at the beginning of this year. And the findings were really quite interesting. But let me tell you about the companies. So these are the 100 companies. I'm going to give you the 100 companies in three minutes, OK? I'll try. But look at the differences in terms of the ways in which they succeed. So, we look in the world of retail, starting with Amazon. Press the button with Amazon Dash and delivered within two hours to your home. Aussie Farmers directing delivery uh, to your home. And Will I Am turning plastic bottles into clothing in America. Etsy bringing small businesses together, artisans. H&M bringing designers to enhance their brand and Indentix managing different brands together. Le Pan Quitien making things human at the same time as digital and positive luxury curating the best ideas, making everything Asian and local and then bringing a community of people together with Trader Joe's. In the world of technology, we know and love Apple for its ecosystem model like the iStore. Hope and the joy, emotions giving people more, frugal making things simple and cheaper. Lego, 65% of people sharing things. Method, making things beautiful in your bathroom. Natura from Brazil, jumping across the world to, to Moscow or to America. Nike saying we're electronics business, not sportswear. Oculus Rift working with other partners to these things differently. Pebble, the Kickstarter crowdfunded brand. In Portugal, toilet paper is never white. In the world of banking in Poland, Aliosync targeting Generation Y. La Casha being kiosking for banking rather than branches. Fidor in Germany, Facebook likes driving interest rates in First National, selling more iPads than anybody else in South Africa. Beauty for Business in Banco and Movin curating all your money together in one place, but not even a bank. M-Pesa, a telecoms company becoming a bank, becoming a healthcare service in Africa, and Square allowing every small business to be a big business. Umqua learning from Starbucks and Gap in terms of how do you do things differently, and Sadisha, peer-to-peer finance, which actually adds expertise at the same time. In the world of healthcare, 23andMe, profiling your DNA, $99, Aravind with Skype queuing your cataract, and Hippocrates giving doctors everything in their pockets. Genentech personalized medicines, and Intuitive Circular Joystick, which will give you faster, safer heart surgery. Mariana Hospitals, two business models for health tourism, funding a charity, and Orkanova 3D printing your heart. Patients like me connecting people with the same problem, and Scanadu tracking your body so you can stay fit. Second sight, giving everybody who cannot see sight for the first time. Alibaba, Jack Ma, doing things differently and bringing the businesses to businesses together across the world. And then, <laughs> and then we come to Latvia. Okay, guys, so if you can try and find my presentation again. But what I'm trying to show, and we hopefully continue, is, is the, the eclectic different models which exist between different companies across the world and how they actually win through different ways. And actually that it's not necessarily the big companies who win anymore. In the past, the big companies had volume and revenue and that made them successful. And they needed that to cover the cost of capital. But today, companies can be small and niche and much more profitable. The largest car company in Europe succeeds through volume, but actually, the most profitable one is the smallest company. 
So looking similar, there's Google X in terms of big ideas to do things differently. Huawei working through partnerships. Raspberry Pi, $25 to create a computer of any type. Samsung sending all their engineers to design school. Tencent connecting Amazon and Google and Facebook into one solution. And Xiaomi, my favorite company, creating smartphones for $99 and even uh, face trackers for, for, for $15. From Slovakia, you've got flying cars with Aeromobile. Uh, Air Asia, the most profitable airline in the world, um, all virtual. Airbnb, connecting the world through sharing, and Emirates, the twice the size of any airline in the world today. Kulula, having fun rather than taking things seriously, and from Hungary, putting a scooter into your carry-on luggage. The best uh, electric airlines in the world, and connecting the, the buses of India. Virgin Galactic is actually about hopping from London to Sydney in two hours and Zipcar is being able to rent a car. Why would you ever want to buy a car anymore? 3D the hubs, 500 places to print in Amsterdam. Corning making emotional B2B. Dyson having 5,000 different variations before they find a successful product. Braskem turning waste into renewable energy. GE making emotional machines and local motors making personal machines. SpaceX being cheaper and better than NASA and Syngenta feeding the world's food, nine billion people done in a simpler way. In the world of fashion, we have Ashmaif, which is working across Lithuania in terms of bringing the best fabrics together across the world. Tom's a one-for-one -one business model in terms of supporting people. Dzigual, giving people flair and fashion, breaking the rules, edited using big data to drive fashion trends. Gilan from Turkey, taking traditional art and making it modern and caring, managing luxury brands like Gucci, Gucci together. Patagonia say, don't buy it because we want to save the world. We care more about that. And Rafa creating cycle clubs, which bring people together with fashion. Shanghai, which is Eastern fashion going West, and Threadless, which is the best T-shirts in the world, brought together by the crowd. In the world of media, Al Jazeera, giving people a different sense of the view. Coursera, giving, allowing everybody to learn through online. Future, creating fan packs between people. And Netflix, having a dual business model by which you can get new things. Pledge Music, crowdfunding music if you want to. And Pixar, having more human emotional storytelling. Red Bull, seeing we're a media company, not a drinks company. And Spotify, being embedded into other people's business models. And Supercell, doing likewise with gaming. Ushahidi bringing uh, news together through crowdfunding across Africa. And finally, in the word of food, this is um, all the nutrients you need with zero calories. This is beauty from Brazil, combining cosmetics and nutrition together into one business. The largest dairy in, Afri in Asia is done through microfinance, and Juan Valdez, the best cafe across Colombia, by making things authentic and real. Philippe Stark adding uh, emotion to Spanish olive oil, and Myrig making things cool. The best beer in the world, making in wineries from New Zealand. Nespresso, 1,000% more margin than the pods, and Yeni Reki selling a culture for drinking, and Zespri, for example. Because Zespri, although we think of it as a kiwi fruit, created the market. It used to be called a Chinese gooseberry, and now it's called a kiwi fruit because they created it in their own name. So what I was trying to tell you in three, which became four minutes, was that actually if you look at these companies, the disruptive innovators across the world, how are they doing things differently? And we can add some Latvian companies in there too. It could be somebody like Click. It could be somebody like Jensen's in terms of their, their stand approach to uh, toiletries. Um, it could be Madara in terms of cosmetics, for example. So doing things in different ways. Some of those companies are big. Some of those companies are small. They come from every part of the world. No longer is it big American companies which is the success model for what we all should copy. So what should you do? What should you do differently in the world today? Well, instead of competing against all those different companies, particularly the big ones, if you're a small Latvian company and you're thinking, how can you reach out to the world? Don't try and compete against the biggest companies. Try to find a way in which you can learn to work with them. So try to find something which is special about you, which can add value to them, and by which they can add value to you. Look at Intel. 
Intel have 12 customers across the world. They have to be, happen to be 12 huge, big computer companies like Hewitt Packard and Samsung. But they have 12 customers, 12 account managers. So their business is small and incredibly simple. But then their customers take them to all the consumers across the world by being part of their solutions. So thinking about how can you become the indispensable partner. Think about Lycra as an ingredient brand, how you make yourself add value to the clothing which Lycra features inside. And so become something more for your partner brand. So the fashion retailers actually wanting to take Lycra and telling consumers across the world about you. So pilot fish are the little fish who learn to swim with the sharks. If you remember Nemo from the Pixar movie, very small fish, about 30 centimeters long. And actually, if you look at them, they're a silvery color with blue stripes. And together, they swim with the sharks, and the shark will never eat them. If you talk to any surfboard manufacturer, the surfboard manufacturers know the shark will never eat a silver and blue surfboard. So what is it about these pilot fish who swim with the sharks? Well, the pilot fish feed the shark. The pilot fish will take the old uh, plankton off the, off the shark's body and clean it. The pilot fish will even swim inside the mouth, the mouth of the shark to clean its teeth for it. But the shark will never eat the pilot fish because they want to work together. So as a small business, how can you be a pilot fish and work with your shark? Who is your shark and what can you do for them? So how do you become a pilot fish? Well, firstly, it's about thinking what is really different about you? So if you're a power generation company, if you're a manufacturing company, if you're a cosmetics company, what is truly different about you within your idea? What is the different distinctive thing? Secondly, how can you help them as well as them helping you? So what do you add to your partner who could take you to new markets and to new categories? And thirdly, how do you grow together? If you combine your speciality with their scale, how can you grow together further and faster? Well, there's four things. The first thing is about saying, focus on what is making you unique and finding that thing. We worked with Estonia Mobile Telecom, EMT. The thing Estonia Mobile Telecom did better than anybody else was to make prepayment cards. So we said, okay, how can you take these prepayment cards and give them to the world and make more of them and they be your, your way of growing? So then we found some sharks and the sharks were called T-Mobile and Vodafone and other people. So these were the big companies who could suddenly take Estonia Mobile Telecom to the world by adopting their prepayment cards. So their speciality. And then growing together by actually having a better prepayment proposition of Vodafone or T-Mobile in every country they went to with the cards which were made by EMT. And then that driving the value, ultimately, both of the Vodafone or T-Mobile, the shark, but equally driving the value of EMT at the same time. So how can you work through those different phases? So finding your uniqueness, what can you do better? So if we take somebody like Madara Cosmetics in, in Latvia, then thinking out of all the things you do, yes, you make great kind of products, great kind of skincare, but maybe it's, it's, the, it's the naturalness, maybe it's a particular ingredient or set of ingredients which makes you special. So how can we find your shark? So what could be a, sh what could be a shark? Who could be a partner for Madara to go to new places? Anybody got any suggestions? L'Oreal. Okay, so L'Oreal could be a big, big cosmetics company. 
So in order to be a partner, you'd have to be different from all the other brands which L'Oreal have got. Who else could be a shark for Madara? Sorry? H&M. So you could take a fashion retailer, absolutely. It's not necessarily natural and authentic, but maybe Madara could make them more natural and authentic. Yeah, so we could add to H&M, and H&M can have something which they don't have, which is a skincare range. So working with a, a retailer or a fashion brand like that to be able to add to them and to go to a new place, great example. And then how can you grow together? So for this new natural H&M Madara collaboration, which are the markets which would love you? So I know for a fact the biggest cosmetics market in the world is South Korea. So H&M and Madara are going together to South Korea. H&M and Madara are going together to the second biggest uh, cosmetics country in the world, which is America. Third biggest one, Brazil. And why not go to India too? But Madara will never be able to go there by itself because of the expense and because the challenge of building its own brand. So working with a shark in order to get there helps you to do things in different ways. So when you're finding uniqueness, firstly find out where's your growth and where's your profitability, but then also find out what's different about you and what are you best at. So finding that distinctiveness. One of the country, companies which did that incredibly well was YKK on our buttons, on our zips. YKK, that Japanese brand which we all have on our bodies, never really think about it but working in partnership with the fashion retailers in order to take them to new places. And actually creating a symbiotic system so you help them to make better clothes, simpler production techniques, at the same time as providing the ingredients themselves. So actually changing the process. Another one would be Dolby, so enhancing technology. Any movie you watch, would always have Dolby sound at the end of it. So making something better. Dolby is the ingredient or the pilot fish which enhances the shark, which is the movie maker. Rolls Royce, adding to the engines of Airbus or Boeing, the pilot fish which is actually then able to be in every aircraft across the world. And finding the shark would be about thinking about who is the partner in the market you want to get to. So if you were Madara, you know, where could H&M take you? Where could L'Oreal take you? And thinking about you know, who is therefore the better partner to get you to that place. And do that by thinking about what are the adjacent markets for you. So if you're growing from cosmetics, what is an adjacent category to that? Well, maybe it's fashion, but maybe it's food like we saw from Brazil with Beauty In, combining cosmetics and food into cosmetics you can eat. Think about the customer. If you want to reach out to a new type of customer, so you currently target young women, so your next customer could be young men or older women. So decide who is your next customer. Think about your country. Well, your next country could be geographically close. So if you're sitting in Latvia, it might be Poland, it might be Belarus, it might be Lithuania, it might be Germany. But in today's world, we don't think in distance, it might be India. It might be Finland. It might be Canada. So thinking about a different place in terms of where do you want to get to. And then is it L'Oreal who can get you there? Or is it H&M? who can get you there. Johnny Depp was the most successful um, actor of the last decade because he partnered with Tim Burton. He was the pilot fish and Tim Burton was the shark. Goller was incredibly successful partnering with Nokia to become the leading technology uh, uh, um, bags of the world. So the bags for your computers or the bags for your smartphones and tablets by working with Gola, it became the bag. By, by working with Nokia, Gola became the bag of technology. And then reached out to places it, it would never have been able to get to. It was never sold in bag shops, it was sold in technology shops. So, so moving to a different category. 
And Whedon and Kennedy, which is an advertising agency, grew up in Portland, Oregon with Nike, a tiny 10-person advertising agency from one town, but has now become the largest advertising agency in the world, independently. So by being able to work with your shark, in their case Nike, being able to grow across the world with them and open new offices together. So growing together is a symbiotic, a mutual benefit. How can you do more for them and how can they do more for you? So helping to grow over time. Part of that is about becoming part of an ecosystem. So how can you be part of, for example, if a, a computer um, goes to every different consumer, how can you always be part of that transaction which they sell? Look at Adobe, the PDF maker inside your computer, but then introducing a whole range of additional services. Visa, being able to kind of be that uh, ingredient within your payment card, but then adding additional services for banks. Or Heller, being the largest producer of lighting across the world by working with a small number of automotive manufacturers. There's no reason why Gola or Hella or any of those other companies couldn't have come from Latvia or even from Uzekne. And then being able to reach across the world with their sharks as partners to do new things. And the third part is then about realizing potential. So think about what is the value of this? And this is some research done by Wharton Business School, and it shows that when you use a pilot fish strategy, when you reduce the risk, when you reduce the cost and increase the speed of reaching out to new markets geographically or to new categories or to new customers, when you work in partnership to get there, you reduce the time it takes to, to grow your business. You grow faster. And typically, a business which grows by itself, by exporting, has the opportunity to double the size of its business in between seven and nine years. A one who works with a pilot fish strategy typically grows to double its business in four to five years. And if you look, sometimes you can be incredibly lucky. I don't know whether any of you use Periscope, the live streaming app on your smartphone. Periscope launched earlier this year, in April this year. Before it launched, it found its shark. Its shark was Twitter. So take this app, this live streaming app, anywhere in the world and allow people to kind of say, okay, I'm gonna live stream from the Global Business Forum in Rizekna today. And Twitter decided to buy their, their pilot fish, to buy Periscope before it even launched. So with that powerful idea, finding the right shark allowed the, the, the pilot fish Periscope to become $100 million richer. So doing things in a different way. Look at Gore-Tex, which has now become big enough to be a shark itself. The pilot fish which became the shark and a global brand in fashion. Wuzi Pharmatech, who is now the largest research and development company in pharmaceuticals. It used to be a pilot fish working with the big pharmaceutical companies, but now it's become so big, it's a shark itself. And the pharma companies are almost like the pilot fish working with it. Or look at gibbets. So that shoe called Crocs, which was fashionable for a while, and then everybody said, I don't want to be the same. How can I be more personal? And so the lady called Sandra Anderson in her kitchen in San Francisco said, I'm going to create some little devices, some fun little things you can add to your Crocs. And she called them gibbets. Within two years, she was $20 million richer because everybody wanted the gibbets. And she worked with Crocs as her shark. She was the pilot fish, Crocs was the shark. And everywhere where Crocs was available, you could buy gibbets too. So think about you. So think about, well, what can you do to grow your business? Think about how can you grow further and faster 
and at less risk. When you're sitting here in Rizekne, thinking, well, how can I grow my business to double the size? How can I take all the great things I did in Latvia and take them to a different place? Think about being a pilot fish and think about who could be your shark. So where are the best opportunities for your business? Where do you want to grow to? Is it to a different geography? Is it to a different sector? Don't just think about going to Poland or Germany. Think about the globe as your opportunity. Don't just think about distributing in the traditional way, but think about partnering in new ways. Think about how can you get there faster, cheaper, at less risk by doing things where they take the risk, where they spend the money and they build the brand for you. Think about becoming a pilot fish. Swim with the sharks, not against them. And grow your business further and faster. So I hope you can take some inspiration from Adobe and Gore-Tex and YKK and think about how can you have a different approach, a clever approach to growing your business and to seize the opportunities of a fast-changing world, to reach the places you never imagined possible. Thank you very much.